All right. Thank you for joining today from uh, all over the world. We have thousands of people uh, attending Subsurface. Uh, it's great to see everyone. Today's session is about the Open Lake House and specifically the fact that the Open Lake House is actually here. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we take a step back in history and look at the last couple of decades, really the architecture of data infrastructure revolved around this idea of a database or a data warehouse. And what happens there is that you put the data inside an engine in order to use it, right? And so you load the data into a database or into a data warehouse in order to actually be able to query that data or process that data with that system. And that's been how we've been doing data. But what's, uh, what's been going on in recent years is this rise of a new architecture, an open data architecture, which we call the cloud data lake or the cloud data lake house. And in this new architecture, rather than bringing data into an engine, you bring the engines to the data. And so the data becomes its own tier stored in the company's own S3 or Azure storage accounts and stored in open formats, things like Parquet files and Apache iceberg tables. And by having the data as its own tier, you have the flexibility to use a variety of different engines. So you have that flexibility um, to use best of breed technologies for SQL, for Spark, for, for streaming and, and data ingestion and so forth. And not just the flexibility today, but the flexibility for the future as well. So that if something gets created in the next year or two years down the road or five years down the road, you're not locked into a single technology. You're not locked into a single vendor. You can take that new technology, point it at the data and query that data. That's what we call the open data architecture. And so who doesn't want an open architecture? Well, up until now, we've had to make that trade-off, right? We've had to choose between the benefits of a data warehouse and the benefits of a data lake house. With data warehouses, we had you know, better SQL coverage, the ability to manipulate uh, the data and, and update specific records. We had better performance in many cases, automatic optimization of the data, right? But we didn't have, of course, the flexibility and the scalability and the, the, the lower cost of the, of the data lake. That's all changing now. And what I, want to talk to, what I want to talk about today is some of the innovation that we have been working on and that we're now bringing to market so that you no longer have to make this trade-off, so that you can use a data lake and get all those benefits that in the past you could only get with a data warehouse. And in order to do that, we have to innovate, we had to innovate in two different areas. In the SQL layer, provide better SQL, faster performance and so forth, and also in the data tier, which in the past was pretty simplistic. So let's start with the SQL layer. What are we doing there? Well, today I'm really happy to announce the general availability of Dremio Sonar, a Lakehouse query engine that's powered by Apache Arrow. Dremio Sonar is the next generation query engine from Dremio, and it provides all sorts of advantages, but especially the flexibility. Flexibility to run it on any data. So if you have data that's in a specific meta store like AWS Glue or Hive Meta Store or Nessie, you can use it on that data. You can actually query object storage directly like S3 without having a meta store at all. And you can point it at one of your databases, an Oracle database or a SQL server database or, or a cloud database and join across those different things. So that you can now democratize data, not just the data that's in your lake, but actually all your data. What Dremio Sonar also expands is the ability to do any kind of SQL. And so one of the things we've been really proud to serve uh, one of the use cases we've been really proud to serve at Dremio is mission-critical BI dashboards, those use cases that require sub-second response times, right? Not just the data science uh, queries that maybe you know, take a few minutes. So with Dremio Sonar, you can do dashboards, sub-second response times, you can do ad hoc queries, and now you can also do DML queries where you can insert, update, and delete records. And I'll talk about that in a second. You also have the flexibility to use any client, whether it's a BI tool, things like Power BI or Tableau, or it's a SQL IDE for people that want to run SQL by hand, or perhaps a notebook for data scientists. And it's not just that you can use any client, but we've provided really nice integration, single sign-on, for example, and native connectors in all the popular tools. All of this flexibility comes on top of the Dremio Cloud Platform, which provides advanced security and compliance, things like SOC 2, Type 2 compliance, infinite scale and elasticity, so you don't have to worry about whether you have one query a day or a thousand queries a second, and industry-leading performance. So let's talk a little bit about that. Over the last six months, we've been investing tremendously in the performance of Dremio Sonar. 
In fact, if you compare the performance today to what it was in November of 2021, less than six months ago, you'll see that Dremio is now 68% faster on the common TPCDS benchmark. Not only that, but Dremio is now the only query engine that supports all 99 queries of the benchmark completely unmodified, standard ANSI SQL. This higher performance means not only that you're getting the job done faster, but that you can actually run with less resources and spend less on hardware or less on infrastructure in AWS. Also, in addition to the raw performance, we provide sub-second response times with Dremio Reflections. This is what allows companies to run their actual mission-critical BI dashboards directly on the lake and not have to move the data into warehouses and BI extracts and cubes and aggregation tables and all these additional data structures that often have to be created in order to serve BI workloads. Also coming soon in the next few weeks is SQL DML. So it's no longer a world where you can only do select queries in your data lake. In fact, now you can, you can, you can do any kind of DML operation, the ability to insert, update, and delete records, the ability to merge and truncate tables. And you can do all of this with standard SQL, just like you would in any database. You no longer have to think about how the data is being managed in your data lake behind the scenes, restating parquet files, creating partition directories, all those types of things. And this works with any Metastore that you might want to use, whether it's AWS Glue, whether it's Hive Metastore, or whether it's Nessie. And this DML is actually powered by an open source project called Apache Iceberg, which I think is the key to unlocking the data lake. Apache Iceberg is a table format that is built on top of Parquet and provides the metadata so that you can start thinking of your data not as files, but as tables. And it's been getting a ton of momentum, a ton of traction in the community. For example, on the left, you see here the, the GitHub stars for this project, how that's been growing exponentially. One of the really cool things about Iceberg is that it's driven by a community. It's not one company that controls or contributes to the Iceberg project. It was originally created by Netflix, but now has dozens of contributors from different companies, companies like Apple, ourselves, Dremio, Tabular, AWS, LinkedIn. So a combination of the big tech companies as well as many of the software vendors and, and, and cloud providers. And beyond that, over the last few months, we've seen the entire ecosystem basically embrace Iceberg by adding support of Iceberg, support to, supporting Iceberg in the various products that are out there. So AWS, for example, announced support in EMR and in Athena. Snowflake supports Iceberg. Cloudera supports Iceberg. Starburst supports Iceberg. Basically, all the different clouds now have embraced Iceberg. And they've done that because both the technology that is in place, but also because it's an open standard. And what everybody wants with data is an open standard that is an open source project with contributors from many different companies and no risk of vendor lock-in. You're here at Subsurface, and I thought you'd really like to see the number of talks that we have here about Iceberg at this event. And we have talks from contributors, PMC members of the project that work at companies like Apple, Dremio, Tabular, presentations from Snowflake and other companies about all the different innovation that's happening inside of the Iceberg project. Another barrier that we've had with data lakes and lake houses has been ease of use. And up until now, it's been too hard. You know, it's been too hard to deploy these lakes. It's required a lot of expertise, a lot of engineering effort. And with Dremio Sonar and our announcement today, we've made this extremely easy. You can simply go to the Dremio website, click on the sign up button and sign up with your Google account or create a username and a password and basically be up and running in less than 10 minutes. We even have some sample data for you. And if you run into any problem, there's a chat on the bottom right. You can just click on that, ask a question. Somebody will be happy to help you. So within 10 minutes, you can be up and running with your own lake house architecture. It's never been easier than this. So the other area that I mentioned earlier that needed to, to see significant innovation in order to provide that ease of use was at the data tier, right? We had to provide all sorts of new capabilities so that it would be easier to have a data lake house architecture. So today I'm happy to announce the public preview of Dremio Arctic, which is an intelligent meta store for Apache Iceberg. For a very long time, 
the only kind of data management capability in the lake was Hive Metastore, something really the, the last remaining piece of that original Hadoop stack. But we thought it was the right time and actually necessary to provide something a lot more sophisticated, much more capable than what Hive Metastore could provide. And so we created Dremio Arctic. It's a fully managed service, just like Dremio Sonar, part of Dremio Cloud. And it's not just a traditional Metastore in the sense that it can provide, of course, the list of tables and, and point to the data for each table, but it does a whole lot more, which we think is essential to having a, a modern lake house architecture. For example, it provides data optimization. When you think about iceberg tables, for example, you have to do all sorts of things. As data is being inserted, you want to compact small files into larger files. You want to garbage collect. When the partition spec changes, you want to be able to repartition the data in the background. All of these things are now happening with Dremio Arctic automatically. You no longer have to deal with any of that as a data engineer or a data team. What Dremio Arctic also does, and this is groundbreaking, is provide a Git-like experience. Things like commits, tags, and branches. These are things that have been available in systems like GitHub and GitLab forever. Every developer uses these systems for their source code, and we're now bringing that to the world of data. And there are all sorts of use cases that benefit from this. For example, the ability to do multi-statement transactions and multi-table transactions, not just a transaction on one table, but across multiple tables. The ability to experiment with data and to do things in a sandbox. So if you're a data engineer and you're ingesting data and you want to transform it and test it before you actually expose it to everybody else in the organization, you can now do that. You create a branch for the ETL work, you do all the work in that ETL branch, and then when you're done and it's tested, you merge that back into the main branch. You also have now reproducibility. So for example, if you want to retrain a machine learning model based on the original data for regulatory purposes or just for, for QA reasons, you can very easily do that. With, with, with a couple commands or a couple clicks in the UI, you can actually go to a specific point in time. In fact, you can even do that with your dashboard. So if you wanted to have a Power BI or a Tableau dashboard and you wanted to run it on yesterday's data to see why you made the decision that you made, that's also one click away without any additional copies of data. It provides data governance. If you've ever looked at GitHub or Git and you've seen that you have a list, a log of all the things that have happened in the system, who's changed every, every file, Arctic provides that for data. So you can see exactly what's changed for every table and for every view, both at the data level and also at the metadata level. Schemas that have changed, partitioning specs that have changed, permissions that have changed. You also have referential integrity. So if you have two tables or multiple tables and they refer to one another in, in, in joins, for example, they need to be used together. You're no longer ever in a situation where maybe you've updated one, but not the other. And what I really like about this is the fact that it really supports kind of the way people think and work in the real world. If you think about data warehouse transactions, they're really database transactions. They were designed for you know, a single session, a single user, they're only for SQL, and those transactions were really built for application developers, right? You begin the transaction, you run some SQL commands, and you commit it as part of one session. But in the real world, changes to data happen in multiple sessions, perhaps by multiple users, and certainly using multiple engines, things like Dremio Sonar for SQL, maybe Spark for, for some transformations, Kafka for ingestion, right? All sorts of engines kind of working together to solve a use case. Well, with branches, you can actually have a real world transaction. You can create a branch, do all the work in, a, in, in, in that branch, and then merge it when you're done. So I think about these transactions as real world and really something that was built for data engineers. Something that's also familiar for those that have used systems like Git or GitHub. And speaking of GitHub, we've also designed the user interface that is inspired by those types of systems. So you can actually, in the UI, you can browse your commits, you can browse the tags, see the branches, fork a branch into a new branch, and really have that very familiar experience that we're all used to and that we all love, that helps us collaborate and helps us see what's going on. One of the really important points I want to make with Dremio Arctic is that it works with all engines. Dremio Arctic isn't something that you use only with Dremio's query engine, with Sonar. In fact, you don't have to use Sonar at all. You might be using Spark or Hive or Flink or Presto or some other engine. Dremio Arctic works across all engines and it provides native integration into all these different engines. 
So in this example, you can see on the left, the syntax to create a branch and use a branch and you know, merge a branch from a SQL standpoint. But you can also see how this works in Spark and how this, using, use, how this works in Flink. So regardless of what system you're using, what engine you're using, you can use Arctic as your Metastore and get a lot more than what you traditionally get from a Metastore. So bringing this all together, Dremio Cloud now provides two different services. Dremio Sonar, which is a Lakehouse query engine powered by Apache Arrow, and Dremio Arctic, which is an intelligent Metastore for Apache Iceberg. Both these services are available in Dremio Cloud, and they all integrate with the rest of the ecosystem. They both integrate with the rest of the ecosystem. Dremio Sonar can be used with a variety of Metastores, and Dremio Arctic can be used with a variety of engines. And to show you what this looks like, I now want to invite Jason Hughes to the stage. Dremio is, uh, Jason is going to show us a demo uh, of Dremio Arctic and Dremio Sonar, um, as well as other engines all working together.